whether it is children in, within your own household, which is critically important, or whether it is the children in our church family, we are called to take them by the hand. We are called to teach them. We are called to remind them. We are called to preserve the faith in God that Deuteronomy 6 talks about. I hear the
to talk a little bit about our faith journey this morning. And in a few moments, I'll actually share a passage from the, the Old Testament book of Habakkuk. As we've moved our way through the Old Testament, we've learned some things about faith and about our faith journey. We've learned some things about family, about generations passing down their faith to the next generation. I want to talk about that today, but first I want to illustrate something about our faith journey. Here's what's happening. Early this morning, I hid something in the sanctuary. Now, when you look in the Gospels, there's one place in Matthew, the 13th chapter, where the kingdom of heaven is described as a pearl of great price. And this morning, I've sort of illustrated our faith journey the kingdom of heaven by hiding. It's not a pearl, but it's something of value in the sanctuary. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, just sort of demonstrate three different types of journeys toward finding that special gift that's hidden somewhere in the sanctuary. So I'm going to call upon some of you to help in that faith journey. And as I look over here, you know, Josh Monroe, you have always... Stand up, Josh, please, for me. Give me some help. Let's give Josh a hand. Josh, uh, I know you'd love to join me on the platform, and that's not true, but... Let me, let me be, uh, let me be uh, just real honest up front. I remember the first time I actually had a conversation with you, Josh. You may not remember that conversation, but I do. It was in Pastor Jeremy's office, and this is way back. You were still in high school. You were talking about your plans for college and all that, and one of the first impressions that I had of Josh, no lie, was just how intelligent. Can I get a witness, Pastor Jeremy? You remember that conversation way back. This is one of the smartest, if you didn't know, this is one of the smartest persons that I've ever had a conversation like that with. And because, because, here's where it kind of gets ugly. Because you're so smart, there's something valuable hidden in here, but essentially you're on your own to find it. I don't have any clues. I don't have any help. I don't have any guidance. In fact, this is it. There's something in here somewhere. You're on your own. Help yourself. It, it is big. You're, you're on your own. Uh, now, I will allow, I will allow, there are only a couple of people that know where this is hidden and they can't yell, but I will allow everyone else to yell random shouts of help. It's here. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so, Josh, you're on your own. You're on your own. Just anywhere, anywhere in the sanctuary, you're on your own. There are lots of things as Josh wanders around aimlessly and, um, and <laughs> since you listened to Austin, I take back what I said about how smart you are, huh? <laughs> I, <laughs> yes. I, uh, yeah, go ahead. You, you can shout to Josh. This is, a, this is a great example of our faith journey. I think encouragement is appropriate. I think prayer would be appropriate. I think all kinds of, of things that we could shout. Go, Josh. I think what we could do, even though you have absolutely no idea where it is, is shout hot or cold. It won't matter to him. Just tell him he's hot or cold. Yes. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Josh. Let me ask you, how do you feel right now? Dumb. Optimistic? <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there will be a parting gift for you later. Awesome. Uh, yes. Let's give Josh a hand. Uh, true or false, one of the approaches that we take with a faith journey is that we let people find their own way. Sometimes as a church family, sometimes as parents, sometimes as adults, sometimes when there's someone around us who is, we think that they're smart enough, and I meant everything I said about how smart Josh is, but in our faith journey, sometimes we make the mistake of letting people find their own way. We let them find their own way. And, and just as we experienced here this morning, 
There are lots of voices that offer help when it comes to our faith journey that are sort of randomly shouted at us. There are messages that we hear every day about faith, messages that we hear every day about God, messages that are shouted at us through a variety of, of methods and means, but they're not particularly helpful. But there is a responsibility for guidance, and often that responsibility is described in terms of what could be better than the Word of God. Dakota, thanks for sitting on the front row, brother. Dakota, see, Dakota is also very, very smart. Dakota, would you join me up here? Yeah. Dakota, I'm going to take it to the next level because we know in our faith journey what could be more important than this handy pocket-sized Bible <laughs> that you can carry with you anywhere you go. Now, what you probably didn't, I'm going to give you this Bible, because in it is everything you need to know. And as a matter of fact, I took the time this morning to write down a little note about this special hidden prize. It's in, the it's in the Bible. It's in the book. It's in the Word. I took a pencil, and I wrote it down. I found there was, it was the neatest thing. Beside this passage, there was a little bit of space in the margin. And I took at that particular, and I wrote, I actually wrote some instructions for you. Because you're so smart, how many believe he'll find it? It's in the Bible. Everything you need to know, you can go sit down and feel free to look through it. It's in there. I wrote it down. I wrote it. It's in, it's in pencil, but it's, you'll find it. Have at it. Have you ever been told that everything you need to know about your faith journey is in the Word of God? Certainly. And isn't it true? Yes. But I don't know about you, I've been studying the Bible really on a daily basis for, for over 40 years. Since the crib. I know, you're shocked. <laughs> I still need help. I still need help with God's Word. I know that God has provided for me in His Word direction. He has revealed Himself as we've been journeying through the Old Testament it's been fascinating to me as I've rediscovered God's truth in the Old Testament. But as I've studied the Old Testament, I have prayed, I have sought guidance, I have discussed, I have found help and guidance through the Word of God. Sometimes our approach to the faith journey is simply, it's in the Bible. How you doing, Dakota? There's a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff in there, brother. It's going to bless you, and it's in there. It's in there. I, I promise I wrote something in there. Now, I'm actually going to ask Layla to help me out here. Layla, can you come with me? Would you mind to hold my hand? Now, notice how easily, Layla, if you come with me, I want you to do something. Can you... Can you look down there? Do you see something? That's for you. You want to get it? You can pull it out. That's for you. You get to keep that. Because unlike Josh and Dakota, you went right to it. <laughs> That's for you. You did great. <laughs> there you go. Let's give Layla a hand. Good job. Wow. Wow, what made the difference? Exactly. The Christian, the faith journey is me, it's meant to be lived hand in hand. It's meant to be lived, it's a guided journey. The faith journey is a guided journey. It's also a journey that we travel together. Hey, hey Dakota, can I borrow that? That's a good... <laughs> That's a good preaching Bible. And I just, I just want to 
just for a minute. I just, just for a minute. You know, a little disappointed, Dakota. <laughs> really disappointed. When you go to, when you, you know, the passage where the axe head fell off and the prophet Elisha, and they asked the question, where is it? <laughs> Looks like you would have looked there. Duh. <laughs> I mean, that's the obvious place. Did, did, it may be, maybe the pencil faded. Did you go there first? <laughs> that, that, that's probably what happened. See, isn't it amazing when we think about our faith journey? And thank you guys for being great sports. Let's give it up for Dakota and John. <laughs> These guys are awesome. Isn't it amazing when we look into, into what it, it, it is described in the Bible in terms of our faith journey? It's clear that it is a journey that we are, to, we are to walk, we are to travel together. And not only that, there's a great deal of help we can, we can give to one another. Habakkuk 2.4, it's a great verse that I want to lift up to you today, just talk about for a few moments. Habakkuk 2.4 is a verse that I believe is one of the most critical verses in all the Bible. It's quoted by the Apostle Paul, Romans 1.17. You'll also find it quoted by the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 10.38. It is a verse that says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The righteous, the just, shall live by faith. What this prophet Habakkuk tells us in this, this one verse is that our life with God is, is to be a life of faith. It's to be a life lived in faith, in relationship, with trust in God, knowing God, trusting God. But how do we do that? What does that faith journey look like? How is it that we come to walk by faith with God, in God, trusting in Him daily, not just once for all, but trusting in Him and then following Him and then trusting in Him the next day, being led by Him and guided by Him. How do we accomplish that? Well, it's interesting because one of the things that I've discovered in studying through the Old Testament again is that much of what the prophets taught takes me back to Deuteronomy and this passage that we just heard in this video, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Often, the issues that the prophets are talking about, the mistakes that are made in God's people, they take us back to the words of Moses that the Lord gave to Moses in Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy 6, just in case you haven't remembered it, listen to those verses again. I'm going to read verses 4, 5, 6, and 7. It says this. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. What this passage reminds us is in the faith journey we have a responsibility when it comes looking forward in the journey, when it comes to looking at our children, when it comes to a responsibility for the next generation. And as I said, when I have read through the Old Testament, one of the things that I've noticed walking through the Old Testament is that from one generation to the next, you often get a picture of the failure to follow Deuteronomy 6. You often get a little snapshot of what it looks like when, when a generation begins to lose a grip on their faith. And these words in Deuteronomy 6, the Lord revealed to Moses and he recorded for us today, are a reminder to us of what it looks like to walk that journey together. I wanted to illustrate when I took Layla by the hand that that is a picture of what God has called us to do in Deuteronomy 6. Whether it is children in, within your own household, which is critically important, or whether it is the children in our church family, we are called to take them by the hand. 
We are called to teach them. We are called to remind them. We are called to preserve the faith in God that Deuteronomy 6 talks about. Let me draw attention to just a couple of things this morning uh, in, in the message before we close in prayer today. It says, hear, Lord, hear that the Lord your God is one God, which is a reminder here that knowing God is an act of faith. Knowing God and recognizing who God is and believing that, that the Lord, he is God and he is one God and, and learning that, it's an act of faith. It's, and, and it's interesting because the book of Habakkuk that we'll talk more about next week, it begins with a question, a, a really hard question. Habakkuk is wrestling and he, his questioning illustrates that our our walk with God and our belief in God and our trust in God is an act of faith. And it's a, it's a lifetime journey, our faith, of learning God, of trusting God, of believing in God, and of following God. And it's never been a journey that was intended to be walked alone and traveled alone. It is a journey where we encourage one another, we teach one another, and we raise up the next generation with our own stories the second thing that I, I learn about this from, from Deuteronomy 6 is that is it refers to heart and soul and strength, loving God with everything. It's a reminder to us that our, our faith in God, it involves passion, it involves learning, it involves discipline, it involves effort, it, it involves integrity, it involves all of these. And when I read through that, all of these are involved in the journey. And so as you Think about how that translates in your home. You have the opportunity to travel that journey together. You have the opportunity to talk about your own passion for God, to demonstrate your own passion for God, to talk about your own journey, to talk about your own stories, to talk about your own walk with the Lord and what you've learned. And at the same time, with our children, we get to do real-time, teachable moments, learning with them, finding out where they are, discovering how they see God, how they know God, what they believe about God, where they struggle with God, all along the way. And that will be different at age 5 than it will be at age 10 or at age 15. And, and the encouragement that I give to you, and we'll be talking more about this, especially the model that Deuteronomy provides for us. Notice the picture that Deuteronomy gives to us in Deuteronomy 6. It mentions things that are still a part of our way of life. Things such as, as, as when you're sitting together. Most of us eat, right? What a great opportunity at mealtime. That was a really weak yes. I can preach to 3 o'clock if it's not a problem. Preach. Yeah, if nobody eats, it's no big deal. And Deuteronomy 6 provides such a map for us. When you sit down together, mealtime, a great time to talk about sensitive faith issues. When you're traveling, commute time. I, I, I miss my commute time with Nick now that he's learning to drive. That's a great time to talk to your kids. It's a great time when you're in the car together. To, to have a discussion. It talks about when you get up in the morning and when you lie down at night. First thing in the morning, last thing in the evening. Deuteronomy 6 gives us some great practical instruction about opportunities, real-time learning, teachable moments in the lives of our families. Now, I mentioned discipline a minute ago because it's clear in Deuteronomy 6 that, that the faith journey is a discipline journey. That investing and, and mentoring and guiding and journeying together is a discipline journey. And so we have to make choose some of these teachable moments and seize those moments to share our faith with our children and to encourage those around us. When I look at this, it's interesting because I, I know that Deuteronomy 6 is removed from our culture and the days of Moses and Deuteronomy prior to entering into the promised land were quite different than the days of living in our world in 2013. But I am struck by the practical applicability of what it teaches us. And the, the root issue is the same. We journey together in our faith. 
we, we own that responsibility to pass that faith along, to cultivate that faith, to journey together, to take our children by the hand and to lead them and guide them and open up, open up our story to them and listen to their story. Now, before I close, it's interesting. I was reading in uh, Malcolm Gladwell authored a book and it deals with change and it deals with a lot of uh, social factors and dynamics and change. It's called Tipping Point. And in that, he points to a study that was done in, at Yale University and in the 1960s. And here's, here's the basics of the study. They wanted to get senior students at Yale University to take tetanus shots. Obviously an important thing to do. And they approached that study in two different ways. They, they sent out two types of brochures to encourage these students, these senior students, to get a tetanus shot. One of the brochures was informational. In other words, here's all the information about why it's important. One of the brochures was very high on emotion. In other words, we want to show why this is important and critical, and we will scare you so you'll be so frightened you'll get your shot. Guess what? Both of those brochures resulted in 3% response. 3%. Look at your neighbor and say, not very good. <laughs> 3%. Now, sent out another brochure and changed one thing about the brochure, and that was they added, they added a map of where the shots were being given and also the scheduled times and how that fit with the student's schedules. It jumped up to 28% when they added a map and schedules. Now, there's something about that that makes sense to me. Sometimes we struggle doing what is good, and, and a journey of faith is way more important than a tetanus shot, although I've had my share. You know how clumsy I am and how many times I've been cut and done things like that. It's very important, but our faith journey is of critical importance. Here's the thing that I learned from that. Sometimes it's really, really important to know where you're going. Amen? Amen? And you need direction. And you need a map. And you need guidance. You also, the schedule to me translates also as we like to know how it fits in our daily life. We like to know how does this fit with my world? How does this fit with my time? How does this fit with my schedule? And, it, and it's astounding to me that Deuteronomy 6 provides such a layout for that. Such a practical approach to that. Where it causes us to think practically. What about meal time? What about commute time? What about bedtime? What about the time when I get up in the morning? Where can I seize the day? Where can I seize those opportunities? And it may be that, that some of those are better than others for you, but Deuteronomy 6 provides a very practical guideline 